Welcome to video 1i on the remaining three characteristics of a good tax. Convenience, certainty, and economy. So when we talk about certainty, what we really mean is legal certainty, which is that taxpayers can, can be able to forecast and set expectations and feel at least reasonably confident that the ultimate reality will be close to those expectations. And that's important because people are less inclined to take risks under uncertainty. And so the more stable our tax system, the better. Convenience can be viewed from two perspectives. So let's start with the government perspective. So from the government's perspective, convenience would be the tax is simple and cheap to administer. So for example, uh, we should know that taxes are withheld from wages. That's a very convenient way for the government to collect taxes. Whereas taxes on non-employee business income, where there is no employer, you're self-employed, um, and so the taxpayer pays through estimated tax payments, that's way less convenient. So the reality is from the government's perspective, the cost of collection should be low. So that means the cost of collecting each dollar should be very, very small. And in the U.S., we have an honor-based reporting system. And we could compare that with having tax auditors walking from door to door checking everyone's taxes. So if convenience is making, make, uh, making collecting taxes easy, when is the last time you quit a job because they withheld wages from your pay tech? And the answer is pretty much never. Or how many times have you refused to pay the sales tax on an item you purchased in a store? Because the reality is they're not going to give it to you if you don't pay the sales tax. So it should come as no surprise that the tax gap, which is the amount that the IRS expects to collect and the amount they actually collect, is thought largely to derive from underpayments by self-employed people that don't have an easily enforceable matching or withholding system. So when we think about simplicity as being part of convenience, um, let's read a couple of these instructions from Form WBEN. So you can see that these don't make a lot of sense. So basically the tax code isn't very simple. Here's one Australian style. For the purposes of making a declaration under this subdivision, the commissioner may A. Treat a particular event that actually happened as not having happened. And B. Treat a particular event that did not actually happen as having happened and, if appropriate, treat the event as having happened at a particular time and having involved a particular action by a particular entity. But as if that wasn't enough, and C, treat a particular event that actually happened as having happened at a time different from the time it actually happened, or having involved particular action by a particular entity, whether or not the event actually involved any action by that entity. So in a 1994 study of tax law linguistics, the education necessary to understand the U.S. tax law was 12 and a half years. But at least that's better than Australia. Theirs was 17 years. So when we think about the cost of compliance, you can see that uh, the cost continues to go up because of the complexity is that is part of our tax code. So here's the number of words in the Internal Revenue Code over a selected number of years, and you can see it's not getting any smaller. And here's the number of pages in the Federal Tax Code, and you can see that as of 2014, we're up to almost 75,000 pages. And I assure you that it did not get any shorter with the latest tax reform. So convenient taxes from the taxpayer's perspective means cheap, simple, and certain. So what's cheap, simple, and certain? Well, that's easy. From a wage earner perspective, withholding is cheap, simple, and certain. 
So from a simple perspective, well, we just covered that. U.S. taxes aren't simple. No way, no how. Are they certain? Well, we have some degree of certainty that you can forecast your taxes, given some reasonable inputs. It's probably not as easy as it should be, but we have some degree of certainty. Economy, I'm just going to argue that economy is a component of convenience. But basically, it means to minimize the cost for the taxpayers and for the government. But of course, we don't want it to be too minimal, because then we can't get any jobs. 